What is going on, everybody? It is Streep from Streep Talks here. And the Jacksonville Jaguars have been terrible this year. There is no doubt about that. And a couple days ago, we listed off some of the people that have been kind of surprising for the Jaguars. Five of the best performing Jacksonville Jaguars of 2020 so far. If you want to watch that video and be a little bit more positive, that video is right up here and in the description down below. Now we're going to be a little bit more realistic and talk about those players that have let us down, those players that have made us yell at our TV, and those players that have made us think, why are you even on the team, ladies and gentlemen? So today, without further ado, we go over the top five most disappointing Jacksonville Jaguar players of 2020. Number five, Chris Claybrooks. Now, I don't really care like, I'm getting this out of the way early as number five because this is kind of a personal thing. I think some of you may be surprised to see Clay Brooks' name on here, but if you follow me on Twitter or if we have had a conversation before, you know how I feel about Chris Clay Brooks. When he's in there in coverage, he gets burnt more than anybody, and this is a secondary that is not that impressive. You have C.J. Henderson, who... If he's not injured, he gets burnt every once in a while, but has some promising plays here or there. You got Sidney Jones, who hasn't been on the roster very long. So guys like Chris Clay Brooks, he's seen some playing time at the defensive back position, and he gets burnt every single play. It seems like every time a receiver catches the ball, you look at the back of the jersey of the defensive back in coverage, and it is Chris Clay Brooks. I have tweeted out, cut Chris Clay Brooks like since week two or three of the season, and I have bumped that tweet so many different times. Not only has he been bad in the secondary, but he's been bad in the kick return game, in the punt return game, everything. I mean, you already have Keelan Cole who can do all those things. I don't see why you need Chris Claybrooks to even be on the roster. This is a guy I wouldn't expect to be on the roster next year, and is a guy that should be off the roster next year without a shadow of a doubt, because he definitely has to be the worst graded corner in coverage for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2020. I swear to God, anytime there's a big play, a third down conversion, you look at the back of the defensive back's jersey, who is it? It's Chris fucking Claybrooks. Guarantee it. Number four, Cam Robinson. I think this is another one where some people are going to disagree. I think that there are a lot of Jaguars you can put on this list, and I think... um Cam Robinson may be a little lower on the list for some of you, but I think if you're going to put one offensive lineman on this list, it's going to have to be Cam Robinson. I think Jawan Taylor continues to kind of make those progressions into being, you know, a good NFL right tackle. You got AJ Can who's playing at a level that he's never reached before. Andrew Norwell, you know, continues to develop, and Brandon Linder is still playing like Brandon Linder, but. You know, Cam Robinson was a guy the Jaguars drafted to be a franchise left tackle for many, many years, and he's on a contract year after getting injured as well, and, you know, the injury is something that, you know, a lot of fans are blaming it on, you know, it's hard to come back from that, but, you know, you're in year number two after coming back from that injury, and you got to play better, and he's hurt again, and, you know, off and on, this guy has been hot and cold, he's been beat, he's been, you know, it's been tough, it's been tough for him out there, and I wouldn't say he's necessarily played terrible, terrible, I'd say he's played, you know, maybe at like a C plus level, but he has definitely been disappointing, especially in a guy that a lot of Jaguar fans at one point, you know, in his rookie year thought this was a guy that could be the next Tony Baselli, a guy that could be a franchise left tackle for an organization on the up and up. Number three, Josh Jones. Now, is it me, or was just, like, everybody in the media and, like, all Jaguar fans, like, hyping up Josh Jones for no reason? Like, I didn't even really know who Josh Jones was, per se, before the Jaguars signed him, but he was supposedly this hard-hitting safety. He was on the the Packers roster. He was supposedly, like, this guy that was just, you know, on the edge of breaking out, and he's going to be coming into Jacksonville, and he was going to be a freaking dog, and he was going to be, you know, the savior at the safety position. That's the whole reason why they cut Ronnie Harrison, bro. This is a guy that is going to be, you know, the next star, the best thing since sliced bread, and ultimate opportunist at the safety position. Josh Jones, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm just going on a 
rant at this point, but no, he's trash. He's garbage. He's absolute dumpster fire awful. Like, he is a main reason why the safety position now is probably the biggest need for the Jaguars heading into next season outside of the quarterback position. But, you know, quarterback, instant impact, you need that franchise guy. But I would say the safety position is right up there with the quarterback position. And a big reason is is because Josh Jones flopped. I mean, they, they didn't invest big money into Josh Jones, but I think they invested a lot of hype and a lot of promise into Josh Jones. I mean, you trade away Ronnie Harrison. And this is a young kid that, you know, the fan base was very split on. I, w I didn't really like Ronnie Harrison. I was never a big Ronnie Harrison fan. I know my guy Chance is a big Ronnie Harrison fan. And right now he's he's playing out of his mind in Cleveland. You know, props to him. He's getting turnovers, making plays. And that was a guy you traded away in order to get a guy that you thought was just going to be this dominant, hard-hitting, just next-level safety Josh Jones. And now, <laughs> it's Josh fucking Jones, dude. He's bad. He's not good. No football instincts and was a very... Very overrated pickup. Number two, Chris Conley. This was supposed to be a veteran leader in a wide receiver room that had a lot of promise and a lot of young talent. I mean, this was a guy that was voted a captain. You know, all the young wide receivers looked up to this guy. And last year, I had a big year, 800 receiving yards. And I think the writing was on the wall early for Chris Conley in that Miami game where he had those crucial drops and Jaguars Twitter kind of ate him apart. And after that, you know, there was kind of no saving his season after that. And, you know, Luton, Minshew, they both don't really look towards him, you know, except for the ever so often drag route or slant route where he kind of takes it for some yards after the catch. But other than that, I mean, there's nothing too spectacular, too crazy to write home about what his 2020 season has become. And it's been it's been super disappointing because this is a veteran receiver. And a guy on a contract year, too, that uh, it seemed like he was going to be a big, important factor in the development um, of DJ Chark, of LaVisca Chenault, Colin Johnson, a lot of those guys. But uh, unfortunately, he just wasn't, and he didn't contribute this year, and was overall just a huge disappointment. And coming in at number one, the entire defensive line. Now, I had a great sit-down talk with uh, Lori Fitzpatrick, who will be in my upcoming um, Rebuilding the Jacksonville Jaguars um, episode, where she said she wasn't really surprised about how bad the defensive line performed, but I am ultimately shocked at how bad the defensive line is, like, at just how astronomically bad they are, like... Josh Allen has regressed a sophomore slump so bad. Taven Bryan is bad, bad. Dewan Smoot, a guy who got six sacks last year. I mean, a guy that a lot of us thought was going to take a big step forward, didn't take any steps forward, and, and if anything, took you know some steps back. I mean, what is there to say? There's a defensive line, Caleb on chase on. I mean, he hasn't got any sacks. I mean, he clearly isn't playing um, a natural position out there. But, I mean, this defensive line overall, man, has been complete and utter disappointment. And it's been a damn shame that the once proud Saxonville name is now the bottom team in the NFL in sacks. What a difference three years makes. And that was the top five most disappointing Jacksonville Jaguars of the 2020 season. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. Don't forget, you can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Fawn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. And nobody out working me. That was just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, just have a great rest of your day.